Welcome back to Bagel Top Games for another thrilling game of Legendary. I'm happy to announce that this is the very first individual viewer's choice game. I have my Ko-Fi page linked below, and on that page you can request a commission of any game setup you would like. And the setup for today's game was generously donated by Gage Bender, so thank you so much Gage for your donation and your request for this game. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. So here's what he wanted me to do today. We're starting with Fin Fang Foom as our mastermind. He has size changing all classes, and then he always leads Monsters Unleashed. As typical with villains with size changing, he has a whopping amount of attack, 20 attack, that we can only hope to whittle down a little bit with the heroes that are selected. And it looks like Fin Fang Foom has unleashed a wave of alien brood, so we'll be doing the really cool scheme, Alien Brood Encounters. This is a very special one. So we've got 8 twists, and then we have 10 brood as extra henchmen. No bystanders in the villain deck. Special rules, cards are played from the villain deck face down. You may spend one attack to scan a face down card in the city, turning it face up and doing any ambush effect, twist, trap, or master strike. If a face down card would escape, scan it and then it escapes if it's a villain. This is a very unique scheme allowing me to stall on master strikes and scheme twists if I can figure out where they are. I can't wait to give this one a try. So as I mentioned, Gage got to choose the Mastermind and Scheme, as well as all of the villains and the heroes here. So as we build our villain deck, let's find out what he picked. So as I said, there are no bystanders in the villain deck, so first we'll add our Scheme Twist here, eight of them. And then we'll go ahead and add our five Master Strikes. Now along with Fin Fang Foom, we've got to add our Monsters Unleashed. And then he's also chosen the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. And to fit the theme, looks like he's also chosen the Shi'ar Death Commandos as the first henchman. And the scheme calls for 10 brood henchmen as well, so this is going to be a pretty beefy villain deck. As far as heroes go, he's given me some pretty cool options. We'll start with Archon the Magnificent. He's from Secret Wars Volume 2, by the way. Then we've got Carnage from the Venom expansion. And Dr. Octopus from Villains. Then thematically No Name the Brood Queen from World War Hulk. And finally the Warriors 3 from Heroes of Asgard. This is going to be a really fun game, I just know it. So let me get everything shuffled. Again, if you would like to request a setup for me to do a playthrough video on, go ahead and visit my Ko-Fi, link is in the description, and you can commission a game of your very own. Alright, let's get shuffled. Okay, we're all shuffled up, let's fill up our HQ. And we're gonna start with Doc Ock here. Same Doc Ock. Archon, all commons I think. Carnage, and another Carnage. Pretty good lineup to start with, a lot of recruit and low cost cards. Oh, got lucky there. I'm all set for turn one, let's get started. Quick reminder that as dictated by the scheme, cards from the villain deck need to be played face down. I hope I don't accidentally flip one over out of habit, I'll do my best. But let's play our first villain card face down. And our first card is, who the heck knows? We're gonna be playing that way the whole time. Well, it looks like I can generate some attack, so I can reveal that one. So let's go ahead and spend one attack to uh, scan this villain card. Oh, I wish I hadn't done that. Actually, it might work out for me this early. Okay, Master Strike, demolish each player, then do it again for each monster's unleashed villain in the city and escape pile. Okay, to demolish means reveal the top card of the hero deck, look at its cost, and then each player discards one card from their hand that has a cost equal to the card you revealed. But since I haven't recruited anything and there are no zero cost cards in the hero deck, the worst this will do is put a hero to the bottom of the hero deck. I hope it's not a rare. Let's see, and it is. Oh man, it is a rare. Well, looks like I won't be seeing No Names Rare this game at all. She goes to the bottom of the hero deck. But there's no 8 cost cards in either of my hands, so I don't have to worry about the demolishing. And there's no Monsters Unleashed villains in the city, so I don't have to demolish anything else. I am left with 4 recruit though, so I can recruit anything on the board. The highest cost card here is Carnage's Carnivore. Either I digest 4, which means I have 4 cards or more in the victory pile, I get to draw 2 cards. Or Indigestion, which means if you don't have four cards in the victory pile or more, you get to recruit. Seems hard not to take this now, seeing as it only gets better as I progress in the game and defeat more things. And the recruit is very good for this early game, so let's recruit it. Okay, refilling the HQ, and oh, we have another one of these excessive violence carnages, and that's it for this first turn. Now the right hand's going to get its first mystery card. Let's see if I want to scan it. I mean, I might as well. I'm only going to generate the one attack. Okay, let's do it. Let's scan the card. Well, fantastic. The player on your right gains this twist as a Brood Infection. When drawn, they KO it and gain two wounds. So the player on the right's right is the left, so this is gonna go to the left side's discard pile and become a Looming Brood Infection. That can't be good. By the way, I didn't mention this, Evil wins when three villains per player have escaped. 
So preventing villains from escaping is priority number one in this game. A strike and a twist right off the bat. Well, hopefully that means a lot more of the henchmen will show up before more of those happen. Okay, I've generated five recruit. I can only recruit one of these many three cost cards here. Which direction do I want to go? Now, since Dr. Octopus is a hero or ally in this hero deck, there's going to be a lot of his cards. Most of these other cards are not tech, so they won't meet his superpower requirement. But I do have two of them out here right now. Get two of them in my deck, and I do have a great chance of drawing extra cards. And hopefully his rares coming up, and that would be very useful. The downside is I may not get Dr. Octopus cards showing up that often because there are four other heroes in this hero deck, but I'm going to go ahead and take the risk and recruit him. Which, after I refill, will leave me with enough recruit for a sidekick. So let's see what sidekick I get. And I get, okay, it's a hairball. Looks like I'll be doing a lot of card drawing. So we had Master Strike, Scheme Twist, and I hope that's not one of those two. Of course, the math is right. It's the exact same hand as last time. All right, let's cross our fingers and scan this new card. Oh, finally, a henchman. But this is a henchman with an ambush. So the Shi'ar Death Commandos... Their ambush is, this villain captures a human shield. So human shields work like bystanders in that they are quote unquote captured by this villain. But the difference is, first you place them face down under the villain so I can't see if they're a special bystander. So also what I have to do is pay the villain's cost to rescue the bystander, and only then can I pay their cost again to defeat them. So we'll go ahead and place a mystery human shield under this villain. So again, in order to defeat them I would need two attack and then two more attack. I only have one attack, so it's time to recruit. I could still use more recruit points, and Patrol the Sewers will work well if I'm able to fight something there first. Also, here's how Patrol the Sewers works well with this particular scheme. Let's say I put down three face down cards. Face down cards will push each other through the city just like they're villains, but let's say I scan this one and I flip it, and let's say it's a Scheme Twister or a Master Strike. It takes effect, it leaves that space, and therefore the sewers are empty. So things could very well play out that way. And wall crawl is nice, which means when I recruit this, it goes immediately to the top of my deck. I'm interested in some of these attack value cards, but it's priority to get recruit right now, so I'm going to go ahead and recruit All-Terrain Barbarian. And I'm hoping for some higher cost cards now that I'm getting some recruit generated. Oh, it's another one of those. Well, if I get enough carnivores, I can eventually draw a lot of cards. And speaking of drawing cards, let's go over to the presumably Doc Ox side. And let's bring in our next face down card. Okay, they're starting to build up. And an even 3-3 split. So with my three attack, I have just enough to save this human shield and then scan this remaining card. So let me do the defeat first. We'll spend two to rescue this human shield. Awesome, we've saved them and, oh, it's a special bystander. Public speaker, when you kidnap or rescue this bystander, you get one recruit, don't mind if I do. Okay, let's go ahead and scan this card here. Oh, it's Blackthorn, five attack with no ambush effect. Thank goodness. Now I have a couple of interesting options here, okay? so. The obvious choice is the other Doc Ock to get two recruit and then be able to trigger the draw another card effect. But take a look at this. Appetite for Destruction. Look at the top card of your deck. Discard it or put it back and then covert you may feast. So here's what I'm thinking. Because her rare is probably not going to show up since I put it at the bottom of the deck at the beginning of the game, we have to utilize her a little differently. If I can get feast working here on the right side along with Doc Ock who's really good at drawing cards, I could end up in a situation where I feasted away all of my gray shield cards, so I just pull the good stuff real quickly. Granted, I'll need some more covert cards over there, but I think I'll be able to swing that. So since I have the four recruit, I'm going to take that gamble and recruit her now. And hopefully I can get something going there. Oh hey, another one. Okay, I think my plan's going to work out pretty well. New mystery villain. Gotta keep scanning for aliens. And ouch, I have drawn my alien brood infection. Again, under Twist, when drawn, they KO it and gain two wounds. So let's KO this infection. And then I get two wounds. We've got a standard wound and a second standard wound. Pretty good. Okay, what's next? Three recruit, one attack from my Grays. And check out this Archon I just wall crawled in case you forgot. I'm going to get two base recruit from him. And then if the sewers are empty, I get one more recruit. Now I only have one attack, so I might as well use it to scan this card. If it happens to not be a villain, then the space will be empty and I get one extra recruit. And I can recruit two three-cost cards. So let's see what this is going to be. Let's scan it. And unfortunately, it's a henchman, and it does have the ambush get a human shield. So let's give it a human shield. And then I'll play this Archon. The Patrol the Sewers does not result in an extra recruit, so I only get two more. Which is fine, because I think I just want to recruit this Carnage anyway. 
Remember, this is the one that gives me two recruit as long as I don't have four cards in my victory pile and then draw two cards after that. So two of these in the same hand after I have digest is going to work really well. So we're going to recruit this first and then we'll start getting some attack points so we can make sure nothing escapes. So recruit and refill. We got to really get some attack points though soon. And let's move on. And let's fill up the city. We're getting too close to an escape for my comfort. Oh, and I've drawn two non-gray cards. The grays give me four recruit and this Doc Ock's going to give me two more. No draw card effect because I don't have another tech card out. And no name gives me two attack. Don't you just love the art on these, by the way? Okay, uh, discard. look at the top card of your deck, discard it or put it back. And I'm going to put it back because I need some more attack coming up here soon. Can't feast because I don't have that other covert card yet. However, I could recruit that now or the Doc Ock card. But let me take a look at this Archon since it is a five cost. Patrol two adjacent city spaces. If they're both empty, you get one attack and three attack base. Now this is a tricky card because of this scheme. Everything's gonna be filling up this city, even Master Strikes and Scheme Twists until I scan them. If I can swing it, I'd rather have this over on the left side, and in case there's any instinct superpowers that come along. Now the question is, do I want this Brood Queen or this Doc Ock? Because each one will trigger the superpower of these other ones here. I think it's more important to feast than draw cards since I want to get rid of those gray cards, so let's go ahead and recruit this other no-name. Which with two left will leave me enough for a sidekick if this is not a two cost, and it's not. So I could spend this two to take this one out. I could save the human shield or scan this one. In the interest of making sure the city does not fill up, let's go ahead and fight and KO this villain here. Oh wait, we've got to read the fight effect. Fight, KO one of your heroes. Okay, let's KO this shield agent and KO the death commandos. I need to be defeating things on the left side to activate the digest, but I'll get there. Okay, two recruit left, time to get a sidekick. And it's, it's yet another hairball. I'm not going to complain about covert cards and draw card cards. So after the shuffle, that side should be pretty good. New face down card and new hand. Hey, I think I fished what I wished here with the amount of recruit I needed. Three recruit to attack. And what does carnivore do? I don't have anything in my victory pile. So indigestion, you get two more recruit. So this archon I wanted to look at before, I think I want to recruit it this time. This could give me up to four attack when I use it, and that's not bad for making sure that this city is cleared out, so let's recruit him. And I'd like to see more Doc Ock cards now for the right side, and oh, there we go. So once again, with just two attack, I have to make a decision. I want to make sure the city does not get anything to escape, so let's rescue this human shield so maybe the other side can... Oh, let me check the other side's hand. Oh, will I be able to KO it next turn? I have, yeah, I have two attack here, so let's rescue the human shield so we can clear out the city a little bit next turn. And who did we just rescue? A standard bystander. Well, helps me do digest faster. Kind of disturbing to say that, but uh, it's part of the game, I guess. And now to fill up our city. And let's do it, last city space. I'm gonna have to get rid of something this turn. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I will defeat this henchman villain and then scan something for the last attack. It's like a three card Monty here. So we'll start by taking out the death commandos. Again, that means KO one of your heroes. I will KO a shield agent here. And then we'll KO the henchman. And then I have one more attack. I kind of want to pull the Master Striker Scheme Twist just to clear up the city a little bit. I'm going to pick this one in the middle. Let's see what it is. Oh, we scanned our first brood. These are one of my favorite henchmen. Okay, the villain gets plus one attack for each bystander in the KO pile. Fight, KO one of your heroes, then KO a bystander from the bystander stack. So at the beginning here, there are no bystanders in the KO pile. So this brood is only one attack. I don't have any left, but next turn it'll be pretty easy to take out and harder and harder as this game goes on. Now, what do I want to recruit? I have these two duck ox, like I said I was going to do, but just in case, let's look at this brood queen. The very graphic bursting with life. You may feast. Then if a non-gray hero was KO'd from your deck this turn, transform this into torrent of broodlings. Let's take a look at the transformation just to see. Nice. It's a two attack and a draw card. This would be great over there. Again, look at that art. I love this art. So the only downside to recruiting this now is it holds off the plan to get the Doc Ock cards, but it does give me the two recruit I need, and the sooner I can transform this, the better. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and recruit this. And then the Doc Ock cards can come later once more show up. Oh, another one. Maybe this is just going to be a Brood Queen deck. I'd have no idea, but uh, let's move on and find out what's going to happen. Okay, who's entering the sewers? No one knows. Now is a good time to remind myself that our mastermind here has size changing all classes, which means the more classes I have in my hand, the easier he is to hit. So the question is, which side is going to be the multicolored deck, if not both of them? 
Now the right side is doing draw card stuff with uh, Brood Queen and Doc Ock, but if I can get Carnage over there too, that's three or four different colors of cards. I think the only blue cards in this entire hero deck are Archon and there's only a few of them. I think they might be his uncommon, but that could also happen over here with uh, Carnage's effect. So I'll keep that in mind, I need lots of colors, let's see how this plays out. So I get four recruit from the two shield agents and the indigestion here, and then I have two attack here. If I spend that two attack to scan two things, then something will escape next turn. This will escape next turn, and he's got a pretty nasty escape effect. Blackthorn gives a wound to each player if they escape, I don't want that. So I think what I'm going to do is take out this brood and scan something. So let's KO this brood from the rooftops, and when I do so, I KO one of my heroes, then KO a bystander from the bystander stack. So we'll KO another shield agent, and KO a bystander. Who gets KO'd? Oh, an animal trainer that makes cards that are red and yellow cheaper. Never mind, you get KO'd, I'm sorry. So that is the first bystander in our KO deck, but this brood's time is over. And I'm halfway there to the digest effect, but now I have one more attack. Which card should I scan? Let's scan the one of the sewers just to see. And good news and bad news, it's a scheme twist. Okay, the player on your right, which is the right, gains this twist as a brood infection when drawn they KO it and gain two wounds, just like last time. The infection is spreading. That's unfortunate. But at least the city's more empty now. So what in the world am I doing with recruit? I think these three are best served on the right side, although I do eventually maybe want a tech card over here on the left to trigger the effect of the mastermind. Let's look at Bending Claws. To attack and then excessive violence, draw a card. Excessive violence means as long as you spend one more attack than you needed to spend on something, you get to trigger all excessive violence effects that you have played. So I've already got a couple high attack cards over here. If I can keep that the theme, then I can make this more of an excessive violence high attack deck, while the other one is lots of drawing cards and lots of recruit and feasting. And these two carnivore cards that I have will let me draw lots of cards and get lots of attacks. So, yeah, I got nothing to lose here. Let's recruit Bending Claws. Oh, I said rent. I said Bending Claws. It's Rending Claws because he's doing some rending with them. So let's recruit him. And after that, I think we are done. I really need to get those Doc Ox to the right just to clear out the HQ. So let's see if we can do that. As we fill up the city, I just realized something. So if I can do this right, because there's now a Scheme Twist in my discard pile, and when I draw that Scheme Twist, it turns into two wounds. If I can feast that Scheme Twist, before I draw it, it'll go away and I won't get the wounds. But let's see if I can do that. All right, let's play the gray cards first. And now we'll play our sidekick. One more attack for me. And let's draw a new card and put it on the bottom of the sidekick stack. So that's one more attack. And this Doc Ock doesn't trigger his draw card effect, so we just get two more recruit when we play him. Okay, so I have enough attack to scan every single card in the city, but we'll do them one at a time in case I want to spend that two attack to fight something that might show up. So first we'll scan this one. Oh, it's already got a human shield, so let's give it its human shield. Now, do I want to spend that two attack to rescue the human shield, or should I spend one to scan this and one to scan that? I have one space of buffer, so let me check to see how much attack I'm going to get my next turn on the left side. Nothing, nothing. Oh, three. Okay, so I've got this card here. So I'll generate at least three attack, which means I don't have to worry about things escaping next turn. So let's go ahead and scan everything else, just to reveal what we've got here. So we'll reveal this one first. Oh, it's Gladiator. Hey, you were in my last Realm of Kings game. Let's see what he does. Ambush. Each player discards an X-Men hero or gains a wound. Seeing as how I'm not playing with any X-Men heroes, there's not much option here, so wounds for everyone. Okay, the right side gets a standard wound, and the left side gets a Grievous wound. Oh, spreading nanovirus. You know what? I might want to actually get that one over to the right side, so maybe the right side can feast on it. Feasting on a wound. But for now, left side has it. Okay, that's all Gladiator does, but he is a whopping 7 attack, which is a big threat in this city. And I've got one more attack, so let's do our final scan here. And it's a Brood. So next turn, I can spend two of my attack to take him out. That's good to know. It's reassuring. Hey, check it out. With five recruit, I can recruit this No Name and also this Doc Ock. So uh, let me do the Doc Ock first and see what pops up, just in case it's something that's preferable for me. And no, that's more for the left side, so let's recruit this No Name here. We haven't looked at this one yet. Surprise attack. If this is the first card you played this turn, draw a card. Can be useful for kind of a free card draw if I play this first. And also will trigger the Feast effect on the other Brood Queen card, so we'll recruit this for our final two. Kind of like a better sidekick, but... Uh, oh, there is our elusive blue card. Okay, so it's a common card, that's the blue one. 
Let's look at this just for a moment because this is a very important card to this game. Quiver of Thunderbolts. Spectrum, draw a card. Spectrum means use this ability only if you have three different classes of cards in your hand. That shouldn't be an issue because I'm going for size changing with Fin Fang Fumo over here, so I should have three different classes in each hand. I'm going to want these on both sides. They're a draw card card, so it's not really going to hurt my flow of the hands, and also it'll help me get that size changing down if I draw them. So i got to keep track of where these go. Okay, I'm hanging in there so far. Nothing too threatening, but let's move on. But now the city's full. Let's do what I've got. Once again, thanks to Gage Bender for commissioning this setup. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I can't wait to see what happens next. To recruit for my greys. Warlord of Open Spaces says patrol two adjacent city spaces. If they're both empty, you get one attack. The most attack I can generate this turn is three. I'm either going to be able to save a human shield or take out this brood. I can't do both, and I can only scan this one, so I'm not going to get to empty adjacent city spaces. So I might as well play this now for three attack. Plus, I couldn't do any of those things without playing him first, so it's a done deal. Now, I'm actually going to hold off on these recruit cards until I do my attack, since I, all I have is three attack, and this one might get more recruit if the sewers are empty. In the interest of not letting anything escape, let's take out this brood here for two attack first. Again, we get to KO one of our heroes. Unfortunately, a wound is not a hero, but I will KO another shield agent. And then I have to KO a bystander. I'm hoping for non-special ones so we can use those. Oh, it is another special one. Darn. No extra martial arts master hero for me. He goes away. The brood's taken out all the good ones. Well, at least this will be satisfying. And with our remaining one attack, let's go ahead and scan this and hope that it's not a villain. Okay, it's a scheme twist. Again, good and bad. Okay, again, this goes to the right side as a infection, which is fine because it gives me an opportunity to feast it. But better that than the left side, but this goes to the right. And then if it doesn't work out the way I want, wounds aren't the end of the world, especially if I can draw a whole bunch of them and then KO them all at the same time. I won't have to worry about them anymore. Other good news, guess what? The sewers are empty now. What I mentioned before worked. So All-Terrain Barbarian not only gives me two recruit, but one extra recruit because I patrol the sewers, there was a scheme twist there, and now it's empty, so three total recruit for me. And then Carnivore, I am very close here. There are three cards in my victory pile, so once there's one more, I get to draw two cards with Digest, but for now, it's just two more recruit with the Indigestion. Now here's where I could recruit a rare if there was one there, but there isn't. Seeing as how I'm very close to getting four cards in my victory pile, I think I want this other Carnivore. So if I got three carnivores and I draw them all, I basically get to draw three extra total cards. So that's six cards. A lot of those could be shield troopers, which could generate a lot of attack. And then extra attack from whatever else I recruit. Let's keep that going. Let's recruit this carnivore. Again, a big card draw is a good way to counteract the wounds by getting rid of them all in one, one turn if I can. And let's do the refill and then figure out what to buy for three. Do I want this spectrum draw card or do I want this excessive violence draw card? Seeing as how Archon's here on the left side and Archon has dual type cards, for example, I have Spectrum right now. I have yellow, green, and red. I think this will be of most use to the left first, so let's go ahead and recruit this Quiver of Thunderbolts Archon. I got a very prismatic set over here. And after we refill, it is the end of this turn. Oh, is that our first Warriors 3? I forgot we had them in the deck because they haven't shown up yet. We'll get to that when we get to that. And new mystery enters. Speaking of mystery, what are we going to play? And we've got some great stuff here. First, gray cards. Now, let's play our hairball here. Gotta love special sidekicks. Draw a card, and it is going to be this one. Then put it on the bottom of the sidekick stack. Oh, we have to get our one attack first, and then we'll get rid of it. So one more shield trooper brings me up to three attack. And then check this out. Two attack from Appetite for Destruction. Then look at the top card of your deck. Discard it or put it back. It is... Another one. So I'm going to discard this so that I can feast, hopefully on something that's not this. So discard. And now I'll take the risk and I'll feast on whatever this happens to be. And good, it's a great card. So I'll feast on it. And that is gone. Remember, I was able to use the superpower because I played the uh, Covert Hairball already. Okay, this one's interesting. First two recruit from Bursting with Life. And it says you may feast. I have no deck. Here is my entire discard pile. Notice how I have two Scheme Twists in there and a Wound. So I could either end up feasting a Scheme Twist or a Wound, which would be good, a Grey card, which is kind of neutral, or a Hero. Now, that could be bad because I have some of these I want. This is probably the card I would be least likely to want to lose. 
the rest are not a big deal and if I KO a non-gray hero this one transforms for the rest of the game so I think I am going to take a chance and feast on whatever comes up I really hope it's a scheme twist though that will save me some headache okay I've shuffled it a whole bunch let me go ahead and see what I feast on and it is nice <laughs> that's what I hoped for so I avoid that twist somehow the infection gets eaten don't get to transform bursting with life but I did avoid that extra couple of wounds so I can't complain pretty good I'm really happy I pulled that off okay with five attack I do have enough to take out Blackthorn if I wanted Blackthorn is on the bridge, so if you fought Blackthorn in the sewers or the streets, each other player gains a wound to fight, fight him here. There's no risk of that, and no risk of him being the first to escape and giving each player a wound as well. It'll use up all of my attack, and I won't be able to do anything else in this city, but uh, it's worth it, so let's KO Blackthorn. And with four recruit left, I'm going to go ahead and recruit one of these Doc Ox for a couple of reasons. First, I wouldn't mind if I feasted on one of these by accident or even on purpose, and also if I don't feast on it, it is going to help me draw some stuff. Reminder, two recruit and then the tech superpower. When you draw a new hand of cards at the end of the turn, draw an extra card. So we'll recruit him. And nothing left to do with that one recruit. But we do have, ooh, another Doc Ock. This is kind of the one I was waiting for. Four attack, if this is the eighth card you played this turn, you get two attack. And with all the draw extra cards I have over there, that shouldn't be an issue. So I can't wait to recruit him at some point. But that's gonna have to wait for my right hand's next turn. On to the left. Actually, hold on, I just drew my new hand of cards on the right, and I drew my scheme twist. This twist does say as soon as this is drawn, you must KO it and take two wounds. So I just did the draw, so let's KO my scheme twist here. Couldn't avoid them both, oh well. And now, and now I'm going to gain a standard wound and another standard wound. Hopefully I can feast those out of existence. Okay, now to the left. Doctor, there's a mystery in the sewers. That's above my pay grade. As basic of a hand as you can get, which means my next hand is going to be awesome, right? So, should I scan both of these, or should I rescue the human shield? I'm going to rescue the human shield, because next turn I'll definitely be able to take it out if I need to. So, we're going to save this human shield here. And is this one a special? Oh, it is, but it's the same one as before. When you kidnap or rescue this bystander, you get one recruit. So, I'll take that. So, fun fact, there are now four cards in my victory pile, so whenever a digest effect comes up, I can do it. Oh, we've got another Warlord of Open Space here. A three base attack card is just fantastic on its own because a couple of those I have six attack already. And then maybe one more if I can get some empty city spaces. Which is less likely, but this is my best this is my best option right now, so let's take it. That one extra recruit really helped me out, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get it. And next we have Bursting out of somebody's chest is another no name. Will I recruit it next turn? Let's find out. And let's fill that city up. I think I'm doing pretty well to not have had any villains escape yet. Let's do the graze, and now let's see if we want to feast something. Wait, never mind, I can't feast on anything because I don't have the covert card played. But I do get two attack from this, and I get to look at the top of my deck. That's always nice. Let's see, what is it? Oh, a Doc Ock? Hmm. I'll put it back just in case I draw another one. But this one's not going to do anything. Except give me two recruit, of course. Now, rather than scan both of these, because one of them or both of them could be Scheme Twists or Master Strikes, but I don't know... You know what, I should be putting counters on these broods, so let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, this one is a three attack because of the two KO'd bystanders, and the Shi'ar Commando are only two. But both of them make me KO a hero. Because I have the three attack, I'm going to go ahead and take out this brood here. So you know the drill, KO a hero, I will KO this agent, and then we KO a bystander. Who's the lucky bystander? Oh good, a standard one for once. So KO this one and make these broods stronger. So now the brood level is three. But this one does get KO'd. Now for the recruit, I already have a surprise attack and if two of these are in the same hand, only one is gonna work to draw a card. Wouldn't be bad to have two just in case they end up in different hands, but because I have four recruit, I think I'm gonna go with this Doc Ock just to afford the bigger one. Because either A, I can use it, or B, I can get some feast fodder, but either way, I'll recruit him. And I really wanna see some more rares pop up. I only saw the one I got rid of. Uh, not quite, but I have a few uncommons out. But that's a decision for our next turn. And the city will be full once again. Can we stop and escape? Oh, pretty handily, actually. So after our gray cards, what should we do next? Unfortunately, Quiver of Thunderbolts does not trigger Spectrum this turn since we only have itself and a yellow card. So uh, just to attack from him. And then we get three more attack from Warlord of Open Spaces. And unfortunately, the scheme hurts us again. We don't have two adjacent empty city spaces, so that's all we're going to get with him. So we can't fight Gladiator, he's too strong. 
The only thing we can fight are the Death Commandos, so let's take those out for two. In which case, we KO one of our heroes. Again, we'll get rid of one of these agents. Since the trooper is what could put us over the top to allow us to scan something. So we KO the Death Commandos. And let's one by one start scanning things from left to right. So we'll scan the one on the rooftops. Oh no, it was a hidden smasher with an ambush effect. Each player reveals a strength hero or discards a card. Well, left has already played all its cards. That's the beautiful thing about this scheme in ambushes. I have the chance to do that before the bad effect can happen. What about the right side? Do I have a green card? I do not, so I'll discard one. Don't mind if I do, I'll discard this wound, no big deal. Okay, moving on, let's go ahead and scan the mystery in the bank. And that's our first monster, I believe. It's got size changing green and yellow. But that means thanks to my yellow instinct card, it's only a three attack, but I still can't hit it. So let's spend one more attack and scan this final card in the sewers. And it's another Shi'ar henchman that captures a human shield. So as of now, we have a two plus two attack, a five attack, unless I do size changing, another five attack, and a seven attack. So pretty strong stuff here. That could be a problem. And with only two recruit and, hmm, I was gonna say recruit a sidekick. However, this might be good to have on the left side for a couple of reasons. First, if it's the only one I have, I won't end up with double, which could be a problem and then it will give me more covert opportunities to help fight against Fin Fang Foom's size changing. So why not? Let's recruit it. I think it'll help me out. And after this refill, that's it for this turn. Oh, I'm getting some good stuff here. I really need to generate some recruit. And this is the most full the city is going to be and the most revealed it's ever been. Except for whatever that is. Interesting stuff here. So now we get to play surprise attack. One attack and... If this is the first card you play this turn, draw a card. It is the first card I played this turn, so I will happily draw this card here. Let's play all our grays. Three attack and one recruit is my total. Now we'll play both of these Doc Ox. Brilliant Research will give me a total four recruit for the both of them. And then one will trigger the other. When you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn, draw an extra card. So I will note that. That's what my little counter here is for. Now for the bad news. So with three attack, I can't take out anything in the city. So look, seven attack, five attack, five attack with size changing strength and instinct, green and yellow. I don't have either green and yellow, so this is gonna remain a five, and a two attack with a human shield. The most I could do right now is rescue a human shield and then scan whatever this is. If this is a master striker scheme twist, it'll prevent an escape. That's my only route to success here. So just in case this happens to be a two attack something, I'm gonna do the scan first. So we will scan this card here, hope for the best. And unfortunately it is a brood, which is a strength four right now, which is one plus three bystanders in the pile. So the only thing I can do now is rescue that human shield and trigger an escape with escape effect, great. I guess I have no choice, let's save this human shield. Okay, what is it? Interesting. Alligator Trapper, when you rescue this bystander, patrol the sewers. If it's empty, you get to recruit. The sewers is full of alien brood, and it is not empty, so I don't get that recruit. So, now I'm stuck with a full city. The next thing is going to enter the city, because it has to enter face down, and Gladiator is going to escape. And he's got a pretty nasty escape effect, but I'll have to just bite the bullet on that one. Also, unfortunately, I if I got that extra two recruit, I could have gotten any of these sixes, but I can't. I do have this excessive violence draw a card, which I think would work better on the left side, but the right should be generating plenty of attack as well. Plus, I need this for the size changing. So, what the hey, let's recruit it just to clear up the HQ. Maybe I'll end up feasting on it anyway. And, oh, we have a rare, finally. What does Lord of the Dragons do? Patrol the rooftops. If it's empty, you get four recruit and four attack. If it's not, defeat any villain there for free. That's pretty good. I hope I'm going to be able to recruit it. But for now, all I can do is get a sidekick. And that sidekick is a standard sidekick. And I'm going to wait for the escape to happen next turn. And now it happens, so let's take a look at Gladiator's effect. So his ambush is each player discards an X-Men hero or gains a wound, and the escape is the same effect. So a couple things happen. First, let's go ahead and put in our face-down, unscanned card in our city. Now we'll add one to the escape counter, which means we only need five more villains to escape to lose. And finally, again, since there are no X-Men heroes in this game, each player gains a wound. Okay, the left is going to get a standard wound. The right side will get a standard wound. And now Gladiator escapes. Gotta prevent more escapes. Okay, I think the first thing I wanna do is pass this nanovirus over to the right in the hopes that I can either feast on it or I can get rid of it with other wounds in my hand. So let's move it to the my player on the left and for the left, that's the right. Next, we'll play the grays. Now we get to finally do Carnivore's Digest Effect digest four and there are plenty of cards in my victory pile now draw two cards 
And what do I draw? Two more gray cards. Let's play them and put Carnivore down. And then we have our All-Terrain Barbarian. Okay, so he gets two Recruit and he has Patrol the Sewers. So let's see, do I want to play him yet? I have three attack right now. I could take out the Death Commanders for two, or I could take out Monsteroso here. With size changing, he is down to a three attack. So I could either take him out, or take this out and scan this. You know what, I'm gonna choose to, instead of taking out Monsteroso, I'm gonna take out the Henchman and scan this, because there's always the chance that I could get a Strength and Instinct Hero on the same turn, and he'd only be a one. So first we'll scan the Sewers, just to see if they're empty and I can get a bonus Recruit. So we'll scan the Sewers. And hey, it is a Master Strike, so the Sewers will be empty, but uh, at what cost? It's been a while since our last Master Strike. Okay, demolish each player. Top card of the hero deck is a three cost Carnage. So a three cost has to be discarded from both hands. Now here's the bad news. I didn't play All-Terrain Barbarian yet, and he is still in my hand, so he gets discarded. That's what I get for waiting. Now the right side is going to have, okay, I've got just the one, I have this Doc Ock, so he also gets discarded because he's a three cost. And that's that, so I'm done playing things over here. I'll use my final two attack on this henchman. And first I will KO yet another shield agent, but I really gotta get some more recruit points over here. But I need the attack more. We'll take him out and then KO the death commandos. So yeah, Carnage goes to the bottom of the hero deck. And with two recruit left, all that we can do is get a sidekick. And we will do just that. And let's move on and fill up the city once again. Well, not quite. We're gonna just put one more in the city. For now, anyway. All right, so I may want to choose to use this turn to get rid of my wounds, but we'll see. So let's play all the grays first. And now we can play both appetite for destructions. The first one's gonna give me two attack. Then look at the top of your deck, discard it or put it back. The top of my deck is a shield agent. The next card is gonna be able to feast on something. So should I leave this there? or hope the next card is a wound. You know, I'm, I increase, it's, this is like the Monty Hall problem. I'm gonna, I'm gonna discard this, and then I'll either get to feast the card on top or discard it and do a random feast. So let's play the next one. Okay, this one gives me two more attack. Now I'll look at the top card right now, and it is, okay, that's my transforming card. I don't want to feast that, so I'll discard it. Covert, you may feast. Should I feast on this card here? I don't know what it is. Um, I'm going to say yes. I'm going to feast on it, cross my fingers, and good, it's a great card. So I will feast on this and KO it. Didn't really want to KO the great cards, but it's better than uh, a non great card. Oh, and check this out. Look at what uh, Smasher's fight effect is. Fight, KO a card from your discard pile. That would have worked really well if I revealed the scheme twist, but I do have wounds there. Look, all of these cards are here, and... You know what, I'm gonna play that and then take out this Grievous Wound. Let me put that on top for a second. Okay, I'll spend all five attack to take him out, and then I will go ahead and KO this card from my discard pile. And that's gone, good deal. I chose not to get rid of these, but I did get rid of the Grievous one, which is also good. And that'll be the end of this turn. Now we have two mysteries here. Should we solve them? Oh, interesting, all right, let's play our gray. And then we'll do both carnivores. I get to digest four twice and draw four cards. So first I'll do the first two, then I'll do the second two. Okay, here are the first two. One, two, and here are the second two. Three, four. Let's play all the grays. That's two more recruit and one attack. Surprise attack's effect does not work because it was not the first card I played this turn, so I get just one attack from this. Now check this out. So Rending Claws will give me two more attack. And it has excessive violence, which means that any time if I spend one extra attack on an attack, I get to trigger the draw card effect. I'm not going to play the Warlord card yet, because if I did, I would just get three attack for seven total, which could have taken out Gladiator last turn, but he's gone, so that won't help me. But take a look at Monstroso over here. He has size changing, strength, and instinct. I happen to have both strength and instinct cards here, so he gets minus two attack for each color you have there. So five minus four is one, he is a one attack. If I take him out for two, however, I will trigger the excessive violence. So I will do just that. I will spend two attack, one plus one extra to take him out, and then I get to draw a card. So let's take him out first, KO him. Oh, let's note his fight effect real quick. When you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn, draw an extra card. So I'm gonna remember to do that. And now I trigger excessive violence, so I get to draw a card. What do we get? It is another trooper. Well, now I'm up to three, and now we can check out this Archon card. Warlord of Open Spaces, three attack. And then patrol two adjacent city spaces. Hmm, I think I'll patrol these two. If they're both empty, you get one attack. So I do get one more attack. 
basically making back that extra attack I spent. So with this 7 attack I have generated, this brute is 4. So even after I fight it, I can spend 2 extra to scan these. So just to be safe, let me scan them first to see if there's something I might want to fight instead. So we'll scan the bank. Okay, down to 6 attack and this gets a human shield. And let's go ahead and do our final scan here. And it is a scheme twist, so that goes to the right hand side as a infection. With feast, the infections are a little easier to deal with than I thought. Because feast can get rid of the scheme twist themselves or the wounds that are generated from them. But it's still annoying. Okay, I have five attack left. Should I take out this and its human shield or the brood? Well, the slower I take out the brood, the less strong they all get. Plus, with this, I'll be able to get a bystander and I'll be able to KO one of my gray cards. So let's do the human shield instead. But I can take out this with two different turns of two attack each. The brood has to be taken out with a net total of two plus two attack. So I'll take out the brood just because I have a higher attack right now. So one of my heroes gets KO'd. Let's do another shield agent. Hmm, wait, should I do that? I really, I really want to recruit this and I need recruit. This is tricky. I'm running low on recruit over here. And there's a lot of six cost cards. You know what? I am going to try to get some more recruit over here. So I'm going to take out one of the troopers instead. And now I KO a bystander. It's going to be a, another special one. Darn it. And the brood just get a little stronger. But this one is gone. So seeing as how I need more recruit and I can't buy anything here, I will use my three to get a shield officer. Let's hope it's a special one. It is not, but to recruit is to recruit. I really need one of these, so I hope I can get one later. But I've pretty much cleared out the whole city, so that's good news. And let's move on. More mysteries more cards to play. Again, not much I can do here. All right, the graves have been played and now I'll play both of these Doc Ox. That gave me four more recruit and the next hand I draw is one card larger. Now, luckily I did generate six recruit, so I'm pretty sure I wanna take the Doc Ock card, but let me look at Volstag just in case. Yeah, eighth times a charm gives me four attack and if it is the eighth card I played this turn, I get two attack, which can happen pretty often, especially with the card draw effects I've got. So that's the winner so far. Volstag is one less attack, but has Bridge Conqueror 1, which means that if there is a villain on the bridge, he gets one attack extra. But then if I play an instant card and there's a villain on the bridge, I get three more attack. This is not as good for a couple of reasons. First, I don't have that many instant cards on the right, and second, I want to do everything I can to avoid villains getting to the bridge, especially because these cards are being played face down. Plus, Conqueror only works if there is a villain in that space, and a face down card is not necessarily a villain. It's like Schrodinger's villain, it is and it isn't, but that doesn't count. A face down card on the bridge will not trigger Conqueror, so I think 8th times a charm is the better choice this time. Yeah, I think that's the better choice, so I'll recruit this for 6. Alright, and I've only generated 2 attack, but that is enough to save this human shield, which I will do right now. Hopefully it's something good. Oh, it's a regular one. I always hope for special bystanders, but they just keep getting KO'd, so there's not much I can do there. Alright, I'll draw my new hand of seven cards, thanks to Doc Ock, and I'll move on to the left. One more enters the city, and I see a couple wounds here already. It was more than just wounds, though. Oh, I forgot to refill the HQ. My bad. Oh, another blue one. That's important. Alright, we'll play our one shield trooper. Now we'll play Carnivore. I get to draw two cards, so I will do that. The first card is another agent. Oh, my first agent, actually, and the second one is a sidekick. Let's go ahead and play the agent and hold off on the sidekick just for a moment. So I'm at one attack and one recruit. Check out Spectrum. Or actually, Quiver of Thunderbolts with Spectrum. So, two attack from this. And if I trigger Spectrum or have three different kinds of card class, I get to draw a card. Check it out. I have green, green and red, and yellow and blue. I have four different colors, which, hint, hint, is going to be good against the Mastermind if I can get that much attack. But at least I get to draw a card right now. And another trooper for me. We'll put Archon down and then we'll play the trooper for one more attack. Doing great so far. Let's go ahead and play Warlord of Open Spaces. Three more attack from him. And then I will again patrol the two empty city spaces here. They are both empty, so I get one additional attack. So let me just check this out for a moment. I've generated eight attack. Fin Fang Foom is a 20 attack, but he has size changing all five colors. I have four of the five colors, so he gets minus eight. So he is a 12. So I need four more attack to hit him. This won't give me any more attack, but the sidekick might. So let's play our sidekick. That goes back and we get to draw two more cards. So let me shuffle up my discard and hopefully we get enough to hit Fin Fang Foom. If not, maybe we can hit mystery villains that are hiding under here. Okay, I've done my shuffle. Let's see, here's the first card. 
Nice. That's three more attack. Actually, that's four. That's enough to hit him. But what's the second card? Oh, even more. That worked out really well. Let's play uh, Surprise Attack. Again, hardly the first card I played this turn, but one more attack is one more attack. Then once again, this card is going to give us three base plus one attack for these spaces being empty. So that is four more. So that gets us to 13 attack. Fin Fang Foom is down to 12 thanks to the size changing from four different colors, which means we can actually, for once, hit the Mastermind. So that was a devastating blow to Fin Fang Foom, and he releases his alien dragon technology. So a hero in the HQ gets size changing, strength instinct, covert tech, and range this turn, which is great news for me. Let's find out why. The best and most expensive card in the HQ is Archon the Magnificent's Lord of Dragons. He is a 7 recruit normally. I only have one recruit. However, thanks to Fin Fang Foom, he's got size changing all five colors. So if my math is correct, he gets minus two cost for each color I have. So I have two, four, six, eight. So not only do I get to recruit him for free, when I recruit him, I get one extra recruit point because seven minus eight is negative one. So I will first recruit him and then I get my bonus recruit point. Oh, I forgot to reduce my attack here, so I'm down to one attack. Wow, that was an excellent turn. Now I do have one more attack. Let's refill the HQ here. And we've got, oh, another one of these. So I can get a little more recruit if I patrol the sewers and it's empty. So let's spend this final attack to scan the sewers and see if it's something that'll go away. And it is. Looks like the dragon has recovered from that devastating hit and he's going to demolish each player again. And then another time for each Monsters Unleashed villain in the city and escape pile. Luckily, there are none in the city or escape pile, but the demolish does happen. And it's a three cost Archon. So there's nothing. Oh, it happened again. I didn't play this yet. So this is still in my hand. So this goes away. I really need to stop doing that. And now on the right side, do I have any three cost here? I do. I have one. So this Doc Ock goes to the discard. Okay. So now while the sewers are empty, I can't get that recruit back because it was demolished. But I'll call this turn a win anyway, and I have enough for a sidekick, so let's take one of those. I hope it's a regular one. It's, well, that's fine too. Blue cards are good in this game. And I can keep phasing him as long as I want. That's really excellent. But I'm going to need some blue cards on the right side at some point. And that is the end of a very productive turn. I can't wait for that rare to show up. A new turn, a new mystery entering the sewers. Can I hit the mastermind again? I don't know, I'm not doing too hot over here, but uh, let's start with this one. Surprise attack is the first card I played this turn. I get one attack, and then I get to draw a card. I hope it's not something that I would have feasted. Well, I mean, that's fine. I have three wounds out. I should consider not doing anything this turn. Okay, two more attack from this one. And then Appetite for Destruction says, look at the top card of your deck, discard it or put it back, and then I can feast it because I've already played this red card. Please let this be a scheme twist. It's not. I don't want to feast this one, but I'll just put it back. All right, I haven't played anything else. Here's what I think I'm going to do. So if I want to get rid of these wounds, the only things I'm not allowed to do are attack or recruit. It doesn't say anything about spending attack to scan a card in the city. So I'm going to spend one attack each to scan these, and then depending on what comes up, I may just do nothing else and KO all these wounds. So we'll scan the bank, and it's a five cost brood hiding there. I guess that's why they call it Alien Brood Encounters. Not to be confused with Legendary Alien Encounters. And we'll scan the uh, sewers too. And it's every Versus System player's favorite character, Timbu Ba. He's got size changing, all colors. I think that's a job for the left hand side for later. And if I fight him, stuff in the HQ is cheaper. That's not bad. So with nothing left to fight for one, I could play this and get one more attack and take out this henchman. But I think it's more valuable of my time to do nothing else, not even use the sidekick so I can save it for later. And, or, or, hmm, if I use the sidekick now, I might draw some more wounds. Let me check my discard. How many dis how many wounds in my discard pile? There aren't any. Oh, this is at the bottom. I don't even think I have any more wounds. I can't remember. You know what? I'll save the sidekick. I will end my turn, KO all three of these wounds right now. At least those are out of circulation, and I'll move on to the next turn. All right, let's keep my winning streak going. How is it possible that monsters like this can hide and that I have to scan them? I won't think about it too much. All right, let's play all the gray cards. And Carnivore will let us draw two more cards. We're going to get, oh, one more of each of those. The agent just gave us one more recruit. And playing this Carnivore will let us draw two more cards. Here's the first one. Oh, nice. And now I'll shuffle my discard and draw my last one. Here it is. Great. 
Might as well just play the officer. Hmm, so close to another six recruit. But we'll play Rending Claws. Two more attack, and then excessive violence is draw a card. Potential opportunity for more recruit. I've got a few options here. I could do nothing and KO both of these wounds. I could use excessive violence on this henchman and then draw a card, or I could instead spend the two attack here and then scan for the third attack. Tim Booba is only down to an eight because I only have two colors here, so I can't hit him yet. But if I do get one more recruit, I can take one of these Volstags, which if somebody's in the bridge, it would be really easy to trigger Bridge Conqueror with him because of all the instinct cards I have. So I wanna go for that. I'm going to spend one extra attack and attack for three this henchman to trigger the excessive violence effect. So I think if I wanna do this in order, first I have to declare the attack and do the attack. So I spend three to attack him. Then I do the fight effect, KO one of your heroes. Let's do another agent here, so KO him. And now we KO the Death Commandos. And now the Excessive Violence allows me to draw a card. I really hope it gives me one more recruit. It does not. I guess that's what I get for KOing them all. But I did just play it for one more attack, so... There's nothing else I can do except scan this card, so I'll do that. Let's scan it. Oh, and we're getting demolished again! Okay, demolish each player, then do it again for each monster's Unleashed Villain in the city. There is one this time, so I demolished twice. Oh, I never put this one on the bottom of the hero deck, so let's put that one on the bottom from the previous demolish. Okay, nothing's gonna get discarded from this hand because I've already played it. Okay, I demolished twice for the right side. The first one is a three-cost Carnage, and the second one is a two-cost. Okay, no rares got discarded, but I do have to check the right side and discard a three cost and a two cost if I have them. I have. Okay, there's a three and there are, oh, there's two threes. Which one do I want to, I'll discard the Doc Ock since there's only one. So discard that. That'll be end of demolishing. And I think there's one more Master Strike left, so I don't have to do that demolishing for too much longer. And the deck is plenty tall because of that extra 10 henchmen. So I'm not worried about it running out anytime soon. Now, I did not get that extra one recruit I wanted, so I'm going to either have to recruit one of these Spectrums or get an Officer. I'll take the other Spectrum over here. I want one to go over here to the right, but I'll take it for the left, just because it'll give me a better chance of getting that Spectrum and the size changing, so I'll recruit it for three. We fill the last spot. Ooh, another one for the right-hand side. And I'll take a Sidekick. We have a Standard. Okay. Of course, I'm realizing now I could have done none of that and instead... KO these two, but that's fine. I'm happy with my decision. We'll move on. More sewer mystery and more tough choices. Okay, two graves to play and not much else. Okay, so I'll play my excessive violence card, but I probably won't be able to do it yet. I'll just get two attack. So appetite for destruction is only a two attack, which will give me a total of four. This is a five. This is a 12 minus four, so it's an eight. Can't hit either of those right now. This is a mystery. And I think I have what's my last wound. So I could either scan this, get the two extra attack, and then maybe take out whatever this is. So I'm not going to be able to feast anyway, so I might as well just play this for two more attack. However, it does say, look at the top card of your deck, discard it, or put it back. And the top card of my deck is this transforming card. I don't want to discard this. I want to try to get it to work next turn, but that's it for this card. Well, I can't fight anything. I can scan this for free without worrying about disqualifying my wound KO. So let's scan the sewers for one. And we've revealed Oracle with an ambush. Oh man, each player discards the top four cards of their deck and chooses one of those cards that costs one to four. Oracle dominates those heroes. That's bad news. All right, I only have one card in my deck on the right and zero on the left, but I'm pretty sure I have to shuffle in my discard pile and get four ready, just like any other time I would draw. So let me do that. Here's the top four cards of my deck on the right side. One, two, three. Four. I have to choose a card that costs one to four and she dominates them. I will choose I will choose surprise attack for her to get over here. Shame I had to discard my transforming card. The left hand did have a deck, it was just hidden. Okay, so the top four are one, two, three, four. You know what? I can get her to dominate this. Alright, I'm gonna have her take this quiver of thunderbolts too. So in case you don't know, Dominate means she basically captures these heroes and she gets plus one attack for each hero she's dominating. So she is a six attack. And once I fight her, I get to put one of those heroes in each player's discard pile. But another expensive thing to fight is not great. Okay, now I have three attack. I can't fight any of these things for three. I haven't fought anything. I have two recruit. I could recruit a sidekick, but I will elect not to do that. And since I didn't fight, 
or recruit anything, I will KO this final wound over here. And that ends my turn. And no sooner did I get rid of those wounds that this scheme twist has reared its ugly head, the infection gets KO'd, and I gain myself two wounds. This infection is not good. Okay, these both go to my right side, and that's the real end of my turn. On to the left. Another turn, another mystery. And another hand of cards to play that's hopefully not too disappointing. Oh boy, not disappointing at all. Let's start with this one, of course. Surprise attack, one attack, and it's the first card I played this turn, so I get to draw one. What do we get? Oh, nice, it's a blue card. Thanks, Lockjaw. Let's play Carnivore next, because all that will do is let me draw two more cards. And what did I get? Another wound? Okay, pretty mediocre. But that trooper did give me one more attack. Okay, so I don't think I'm going to be able to hit the Mastermind this turn. Here's why. I have four different colors. I have red, green, blue, and yellow. So he is a 12 this turn. I have two attack, which means I need 10 more attack to hit him. This gives me three, and this gives me two, so that's five. So after that, I need five more attack. Let's pretend I play these two for five, and I need five more. This is, if there's two adjacent city spaces open, you get plus one attack. There's no way for me to do that without spending attack, so that's not going to help me. Lord of Dragons, though, will give me plus four attack if there's nothing on the rooftops. Problem is, not only can I not defeat him without spending attack, but I'm still one attack short if I do that. So that being said, let me see, with Timbu Ba's Saiyas changing, what attack he is. He has Saiyas changing all colors, like Fin Fang Foom. So he's also minus eight, so he's a four attack. But instead, I think what I want to do is play Lord of Dragons. So check, it, check out Lord of Dragons for a second. So either I defeat him for free, which leaves the four attack I would have used on him to be used later, or I generate four attack and hit him, and then play Lord of Dragons, which will give me not only four attack, but four recruit as well. Plus this card will give me six recruit, which will allow me to recruit one of these Vol stacks. So I think that's the route I want to go. So I won't play Lord of Dragons yet. I'm going to play Warlord of Open Spaces, giving me three attack. So now I'm up to five. I can't trigger his secondary effect, but three attack is three attack. And now, since Tim Boomba is size changing all colors, again, he is minus eight for four different colors, so he is a four. I will use four of my generated attack to KO him. And when I do, all heroes currently in the HQ cost one less this turn, so I'll have to remember that and KO him. Great, so that makes this a two, five, 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 and three. I'm gonna put a little one here next to my recruit section so I remember that. Okay, now I'm gonna play Lord of Dragons. This is a cool card. I don't think I've actually ever used it before when playing Legendary, but I'm using it now. So patrol the rooftops. If it's empty, which it is now, you get four recruit and four attack. So I get both of those. Not bad at all. Okay, now let me decide whether or not to play this Lockjaw. If I play him, I get two more attack and that's six. As of right now, I don't have enough attack to hit either of these guys. But if I phase him, I could end up with a card that gives me more attack without having to use up my rare blue card, which will help me with the size changing on the Mastermind. I think I want to take that risk, so let's go ahead and phase him out. Oh, exactly what I needed. One more attack from that brave trooper who just phased. So now with that five attack, I can take out this brood here. All right, so I got to KO something. A hero that is, let's KO this gray one. And we have to KO a bystander again. Please don't let it be a special one. It's not, good. All right, so now the brood are even stronger. They are plus five now, but this one is nothing. Now, finally, I'll play this Archon. I get two recruit from him. I did not get a chance to scan the sewers, so I can't see if it's empty, so I don't get to uh, patrol it. Okay, I ended up with six recruit, and everything here is one recruit cheaper. So if I wanted to, I could recruit these two, but that doesn't make much sense. I want to recruit another Volstag here because with all the henchmen in here, I could purposefully let the city fill up, and then maybe draw them and uh, hit the mastermind a bunch of times. I don't know, but it seems like the right way to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and recruit this Volstag here, which puts me back down to one recruit. But even though everything is one cheaper, there's nothing I can recruit there unless this next thing is a two cost and it's not. That wouldn't have worked anyway because when Tim Buba got KO'd, it only affected anything that was in the HQ at that time. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay, I love this card. Let's see if I get it again, moving on. And maybe I should let the city fill up this time, just so I can draw those Volstags over there. Okay, it looks like the right side is turning out to be the weaker deck, but we'll just find out. Two recruit and one attack, and these two will give me, brilliantly, two more recruit, and then I get to draw an extra card next turn. If I hadn't demolished my last card over here, I would have had seven cards this turn. Okay, let's reveal uh, with my one attack the card in the bank. More death commandos who capture another human shield. 
And this one's kind of a no-brainer. I'm going to go ahead and recruit this other Doc Ock here. Hopefully I get to draw those soon. Back to the left. Okay, if I can leave Oracle in the bridge, that might be best. Except I won't get my cards back from her. Of course, Lockjaw is back, but uh, let's play the Greys. And let's play one of our Carnivores, which means I get to draw two cards here. Nice. And we'll play the other Carnivore, so we can draw two more. And here they are. Okay, let's fix the arrangement here. Okay, I'm going to play the Maria Hill. Gave me two more recruit. Now, why not? I'll go ahead and play this sidekick. So I get to draw two more here, and they are these. Let's play the agent. I'm at four recruit. We'll play Rending Claws to attack and excessive violence. Okay, now we'll do... Okay, now Quiver of Thunderbolts to attack. And I get to draw a card. Let's put Quiver back. And what do we draw? Another agent. Let's play it. Now, where do I stand? I have five attack, five recruit. I could easily get enough to uh, take out Oracle, and I think I want to do that to get my cards back. Yeah, I have plenty of uh, I have plenty of these, so I'm going to spend Lockjaw this turn for the two extra attack. Okay, so now I'm at seven attack, and I'll spend six of it to take out Oracle here. She has no fight effect, so she just gets KO'd. And I get to distribute these two cards out the way I want to. I'm going to put them back to where they were from. So this goes back to the left because I'll be able to trigger the spectrum definitely more often. And then this one goes to the right because the right does not have this card already. So put them where they need to go. And that's done. Now I can do this card. Warlord of Open Spaces not only gives me three attack, but I patrol these two empty city spaces. And they are both empty now, so I get one additional attack. And that's all I can do. Now what I think I'm going to do is spend two to save the human shield. One to reveal, one to reveal. That way I can build up the city a little bit, let something get into the bridge, and then KO everything else. So I won't be at risk of things escaping, but also Volstag's cards will work better when they show up in two turns. I think that's the plan. Oh, wait, unless unless these are Master Strikes or Scheme Twists, so maybe I shouldn't scan anything. That's dangerous, though. There's not as many of them left, but it's still a risk. So yeah, I'm only going to spend two to get the Human Shield, because I really want that Bridge Conqueror. Okay, and what have I rescued? A standard bystander. Okay. I know I'm taking a risk not scanning or KOing anything else, but I have a, a little bit of a buffer of four escaped villains before the dangerous last one. So I think I'm okay. As far as recruiting, there's a couple of options. I could take this card again. Remember, all Quiver does is give me two attack and then draw a card with Spectrum, which I'm almost always going to have over here. Now, Fandral the Dashing will give me two attack and he'll allow me to move villains over which will help with the Bridge Conqueror stuff. And then Brilliant Research will just serve to help with the size changing because I don't have any tech cards over here. Now, size changing only reduces the attack by two and he doesn't have any attack on him. So using him to reduce attack is literally the same thing as using one of these two cards to gain attack. So I don't think it's worth taking this Doc Ock with Recruit. So it's between these two. I'm not gonna need to do that if I have a villain camping out here in the bridge. And it's not like I can let some villains escape and some not because all escapes are bad for this scheme. So I think I am going to take this Quiver of Thunderbolts right here. I originally wanted to spread them between both decks, but consolidating them on the left and giving the left a much better chance of taking out Fin Fang Fu might be the best way to go. And with my final... Oh, let's re replenish and see what I get. Another one of these. And uh, let, let's go ahead and uh, get a sidekick. Hoping for another Lockjaw or a standard... The coolest standard. And I gotta make sure Lockjaw goes away. And that is all I'm gonna do. Just for a second, this is the size of the deck on the left side. It's pretty good. And a lot of the great cards are gone. Well, more on the right side. All right, let's keep my plan going and push that henchman to the edge. Getting closer there. Oh, things are finally coming together over here. Okay, let me play this trooper. Now let me play this sidekick just because I want to see if I can get this feast to trigger. So I'll play it, get two more cards. Here they are. One, two. Oh, I can. The trooper's going to give me one more attack. Okay, let's play the first one. Two more attack from her. I don't get to feast, but I do get to look at the top card of my deck and discard it or put it back. And it is hmm, this Doc Ock. I shoot. I don't want to get rid of this, especially with all of these going on. So I'm not going to feast with this one, and I'm not going to feast with this one. So I'll play, uh, well, I'll finish playing this one. Then I'll play the second one for two more attack. I won't bother looking at the card because I already know what it is. Now we'll play all three of these guys. Just kidding, I forgot I played a sidekick. I'm only going to play two, and here's why. I'll play the two I put here for four more recruit, or four recruit at all. Now the first one is just a two recruit, does nothing else. 
The second one is going to trigger the effect when you draw a new hand of cards at the end of this turn. Draw an extra card. So right now I'm going to be drawing one extra card. The reason why I'm not playing this last one in the close-up here is because I've played one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven for the sidekick. I want to play this next instead. All right. Four attack right now. And then if this is the eighth card you played this turn, which it is, you get two more attacks. So that's two more attack for me. And now I'll play this last brilliant research here. That gave me two additional recruit, and then I get to draw one extra card next turn. So I'm drawing two total extra cards. Okay, now here's the difficult situation. Unfortunately, I only have size changing three here because I have strength, tech, and covert. That means our mastermind here is still a 14. I don't have enough to hit him without one more color of card. As far as I can tell, there's nothing I can do to get one more color of card or any more attack anymore. Now, my original plan was to do nothing until next turn, so this ended up on the bridge which would make, over here, Volstag stronger. Because if he gets Bridge Conqueror 3, because of a, a trigger from an Instinct card, he will get 3 extra attack, making a 6 total attack per card I play, which is good. However, I have 12 attack now. The question is, should I scan everything and fight as many things as I can to prevent escapes, or not? Let me look at my next hand. So over here on the left, I have the Instinct and I have Volstag, so I'm going to generate 2 plus 3, so 5, plus three more for Bridge Conqueror, so eight attack, plus this one, nine. If I play this first, I get to draw a card. And I think I recruited, I'm almost gonna recruit the last one. So as much as I don't wanna do this, I'm going to not spend any of my attack just so I can get Bridge Conqueror. And then I'll start attacking things. I hope this is not a mistake. So what I'll do here is I will spend four of my recruit to recruit this Brood Queen. Appetite for Destruction again gives me two attack and then lets me feast with another red card So I will recruit this and then replenish and then oh look at that This would be perfect for the left side because it would give me that tech requirement But also let me draw a card, but with the two recruit I have left I'm gonna go ahead and get a sidekick and I've got Throg, okay, okay I'm just gonna give up this 12 attack and do nothing for the plan. Let's hope it works Okay, now the city will be full. Let's do some bridge conquering so first I'll play the Bird Queen again that just gives me one attack and lets me draw a card if it was the first card played, which it is. Surprise attack, draw a card. Nice. Now I'll play the Officer. Let's play Rending Claws. Once again, two attack and excessive violence, draw a card. We'll see what I uncover and then decide if I want to do excessive violence. Okay, now we can finally play our first Volstag. Or is it Volstag? Come to think of it, it's probably Volstag. Volstag the Valiant of the Warriors 3. So three attack plus bridge conqueror three because of my instinct card here so he gets a total of six plus attack okay now i'm up to nine how much do i need to hit fin fang foom this turn oh you know what i can't do that well i gotta i gotta get rid of something because otherwise i'm gonna have an escape so let's start the revealing this way on hopefully we'll have some, some things i can get rid of and maybe some things will be a uh, scheme twist so we'll scan the streets and we've got him it's a beefy brood he is a six attack do i stop here and hit him for six or do I keep scanning? I have eight attack, so I could take, I don't want to take this one out, but if I hit him for six, I'd have two left, so let's go ahead and scan this one too, just to be safe, all right? Uh, scan the rooftops. And there it is, our scheme twist, so this is gonna go to the right side discard pile. Hopefully I can feast it, like I did one of them before. Infection. Well, I'm glad I didn't scan that earlier, or I wouldn't have been able to get him to the bridge. Okay, I still have one attack to spare, so I will go ahead and scan the bank. More Shi'ar Death Commandos. They get themselves a human shield. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. There's one way that I can take out two enemies this turn. I have six attack. I have this Warlord that'll give me plus one attack if there's two empty spaces next to each other. So what I'm going to do is spend two to take out the human shield. And by take out, I mean rescue. And I've rescued a standard by a standard. All right, now I have four attack left. I will spend two of that four attack to take this henchman out. Without its human shield, it was just a two attack, and I have to KO one of my heroes. Now that's the tough part, because I have no gray heroes except for Maria Hill. But I think I have most of what I was trying to recruit, so I'm going to go ahead and KO her anyway. And KO the Death Commandos. Now that I've done that, I can finally play this. Warlord of Open Spaces gives me three attack. And now I can patrol two adjacent city spaces. The rooftops and the bank are both empty now, so I get one additional attack to make six. Which will give me just enough to take out this brood here. So let's go ahead and take it out. Now the hard part is I have to KO one of my heroes after KOing the Maria Hill. I'm gonna get rid of this one, it's only one attack. 
The All Terrain Barbarian is a recruit card, but it's a dual class, which could be useful in case I don't pull a red card, so I am going to KO this one instead. Okay, now I KO a bystander. It's going to be another... Oh, always the special ones I KO. Okay, this one gets KO'd too. And so does the Brood. Now any new Brood that shows up is going to be plus six, so a seven total. Finally, we will play All Terrain Barbarian, or ATB if you will. Uh, patrol the sewers, it's not empty, there is a mystery there, but I get two more recruit. I would prefer one of these two, and I don't have to move any more enemies because this is here. But, uh, this is basically a free extra card draw, so I will go ahead and recruit it. And that's that, I'm glad my plan worked and wasn't a complete failure, so moving on. Oh, we gotta refill. Fill, and, oh, look at that. That's the first time that's shown up. Okay, this one lets you reveal the top card of your deck and KO it. Kinda like Feast. Actually, exactly like Feast, but not. Let's see if I can get that on the right side. And speaking of the right side, new card to scan, and a new hand of eight cards. All right, go shield. I bet they wonder what the heck they're doing here working with this lineup. Okay, let's play Bursting with Life. I'm just realizing this would have worked really well with Wall Crawl, but nothing here Wall Crawls. Okay, I may, f first I get to recruit actually, and then I may feast. If a non-gray hero was KO'd, I get to transform it into Torrent of Broodlings. I hope it is a non-gray hero, so I can get that transformation. And, well, it's a wound. At least I get rid of a wound. I'm not going to be mad about that. But that's all this card can do here. Now I'll play Rending Claws. Two more attack for me and the potential excessive violence draw card effect, if I can do that. Now I'll play Brilliant Research. Just gives me two recruit. Okay, now check this out. I've played one, two, three, four, five, six cards. This only gives me plus two bonus attack if it's the eighth card, and I can't play this wound. But there is a way I can get another card if I use excessive violence. So basically, I'd spend one attack to get two. I don't know if it'll help me, but it's worth it. So I'm going to spend three attack instead of two. Oh, I don't want to take that out. Shoot. Maybe I can't. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scan things instead. If I take that out, then Volstag won't get his bridge conqueror over on the other side. So let's go ahead and scan the bank. And it's Zutak. He's got size changing, ranged and instinct, blue and yellow, and he demolishes each player. If he escapes, he has a nine attack. Well, I have an instinct hero, so he is a seven, but that, I can't fight him for anything. If I play this, I'll get six attack, and I still can't fight him. So I might as well, let's go ahead and scan this final card here. And it's Smasher again, he's back. Each player reveals a strength hero or discards a card. Um, I've revealed it right here, don't have to do that. But on the left side, what do I have? I don't have any strength heroes, but I do have this wound to discard, so I will immediately discard it, and that's the end of that. But check this out. He is a 5 attack. I will play this Doc Ock card, playing 8th times a charm as my 7th card, so he does not get the plus 2, but I do get plus 4 attack. Oh, check this out. This is going to be really satisfying. So I have 5 attack. I'm going to fight him for 5. The fight effect is KO a card from your discard pile, and if you were paying attention last turn, you know what's on the top of my discard pile over here. Check it out. The Scheme Twist. I wonder what card I'm going to KO? Uh, this one. Wow, the combination of Feast and this uh, fight effect from Smasher is helping me out in a big way. But he goes away now. And with my 6 recruit, what do I want? Okay, Gruesome Feast. If I use Excessive Violence, which I didn't get to use this turn to draw a card, unfortunately. Reveal the top card of your deck, you may KO it. That's useful. I still have lots of wounds and lots of great cards over here. This Doc Ock that just says draw a card, that's best for the left side. Again, to get that final minus two on the size changing for the Mastermind. I think the left side is going to be the one that takes down the Mastermind. And the right side is going to help take out the monsters in the, in the middle here. So let's do that. Let's recruit Gruesome Feast for the right. And give it a refill. And we have another one of these. Okay, I'm very satisfied with how well this is going. I just really need to get more hits on the Mastermind. Uh, the villain deck still has plenty of cards in it, albeit one less now. Kind of a wimpy hand this turn, but at least I can play this properly. Okay, I get three attack, and I patrol these two, so I get one extra attack. So four attack from this uh, Archon card. All right, and finally, Quiver of Thunderbolts. Two more attack, and I draw a card because I... Oh, so I get two more attack here, but unfortunately, with only ranged and instinct, I do not have three different kinds of classes, so I cannot draw a card from Spectrum. One of my weaker hands here, except, remember, Zutak has size changing blue and yellow, and I have blue and yellow, so he's minus four, so he's only a five attack, so I will go ahead and KO him for five, which will leave me with two more attack, one of which I will use to scan the sewers, and it's a trap. Now, this is an oddly specific way to mess me up. Look at this, ambush. If the bridge is empty, reveal the top card of the villain deck. If it's a villain, put it on the bridge. I already worked really hard to get something on the bridge. By end of turn, have no villains on the bridge. 
or suffer after you draw your new hand at the end of turn, each player KOs a non-gray hero from their discard pile. Now here are my decisions here. I have two attack left after attacking and scanning. I could prevent the trap by taking this one out, or I could ignore it and suffer the consequences of the trap, but also I could have him still in the bridge triggering Volstag's effect, especially if I get the third one. So again, after you draw your new hand at the end of turn, each player KOs a non-gray hero from their discard pile. Now the right side has no discard pile, so the right side will be safe. Let's check on the left side, the side whose turn it is right now. In my discard pile, do I have anything I wouldn't mind getting rid of? Hmm. Well, including these two. It's hard to say. Probably... No, I don't want to get rid of this because of the dual typing. Draw a card, draw a card. Probably Carnivore. It'll let me... I have a couple other ones, but by itself it doesn't do anything except let me draw an extra card. Everything else is good for this late stage of the game that has a lot of attack except for this, but this will give me the uh, double power I need. I don't have a lot of uh, covert cards here. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to go ahead and... Wait, never mind. I found a workaround. I have two recruit here. If I recruit a sidekick and I get a special sidekick, I can KO that. But that's chance. So I'm going to spend two recruit, recruit a sidekick. I'm going to hope it is a special one. Let's see what I get. Yes, it is a special one. I got lucky. So Throg is going to get KO'd, but I'll put him on my discard for now because sidekicks are heroes. Okay, so I'm going to end my turn. This villain on the bridge, after you draw your new hand, each player KOs a non-gray hero from their discard pile. So luckily I have enough in my deck here to not have to shuffle in my discard pile. So let me collect all these. And the trap happens. And now I have to KO something. And let me dig out Throg here. Okay. So Throg gets KO'd. All right, I'm glad I thought of that. And the trap gets KO'd. Wow, I made it out of that one too. Okay, let's keep this going. Okay, enter the sewers and play what I've got. Man, I really need to get rid of these gray cards, but I'll play them now. And I can't trigger any superpowers. This is perfect. So I'll play this one for the two more recruit. And I'll play this one for the two more attack. And all I get to do is look at the top card of the deck and decide whether to discard it or not. And I will not discard this, but I don't get to feast anything. And that's all I've got. Let's spend one to scan the sewers. Oh, it's Orgo. You can't fight Orgo. Unless you've already defeated another villain this turn. Good to know. And four recruit is just good enough to get me one more of these, and hopefully I can draw a few this time to start feasting on stuff. So we will recruit that one, and refill the HQ, and then end my turn. Okay, let me just get one of those on the left. Just one is good. Okay, back to the powerhouse side. We got somebody in the sewers hanging around, and what do we have to play? Okay, interesting. Play the gray cards. Now we'll play Lord of Dragons. I'm loving this card more and more. Okay, patrol the rooftops. If it's empty, which it is, you get four recruit and four attack. Thank you. Now we'll play Carnivore, the one I have left. Let's draw our two cards. One, two. Cool, another Carnivore, let's play it. We'll draw two more cards. One, two. Oh, our third Carnivore, let's play that one. Before I play that, I have five recruit. So what I wanna do now is use my five recruit I've generated to recruit that Doc Ox so that when I shuffle my discard pile to be able to draw the two cards from Carnivore, I might draw that Doc Ock and have my last color for size changing for the Mastermind. So. We'll recruit this one, punish the HQ, and then I will play this Carnivore here. So now I have to draw two cards. Let me shuffle my discard now with the Doc Ock in there and see if I draw them. Okay, we're all shuffled up. I drew one and two. Mm, too bad. Well, let's play these two. But I do have more opportunities to draw cards. Quiver of the Thunderbolts. Two more attack. And I get to draw a card, and I get... There he is. Crazed Experiments. Two more attack for me. I get the tech card on the board and I get to draw one more card. So the new card draw is, oh, another one of these. Let's keep this chain going. My fourth carnivore lets me draw two more cards. Let me do it. Here they are. One, two, oh, more chains. But let's play this gray. That's one more recruit for me. We'll play another quiver of thunderbolts. That gives me 12 attack total. And then I get one more card draw. Here we are. Okay, I still don't have a covert hero. So hopefully I get that to get all five of uh, the size changings. So I'll play this third one here. Two more attack and one more card draw. It's not the red one, however, I still have a sidekick. So I'm gonna cash that in right now because why not? And then my final two cards to draw are, there it is, one, two. Ooh, this is even better than I thought. This is my best hand ever. Let's play Volstagg the Valiant. He gets three attack plus Bridge Conqueror three because of, oh wait, yes, yes. Lord of Dragons is a instinct, so I get six attack total from Volstagg. 
So now I'm up to 20 attack. I gotta get some extra dice here because I wanna play Warlord of Open Spaces. Remember, three attack, plus I get to patrol two adjacent city spaces. If they're open, I get one attack. So four total attack from this card. So I'm up to 24. And I'll play the second one here to get another four attack. Now I'm up to 28 attack. And then finally, I will play All-Terrain Barbarian so I get that uh, red covert card. I'm glad I didn't get rid of it. So just two more recruit from there. I don't get to patrol the sewers. The sewers aren't empty. Oh, wait, hold on. Do I want to spend something to empty the sewers before I play this? Yeah, let me, let me rewind that just in case so I won't get the extra two recruit yet. Let me see how much I can hit Fin Fang Foom for. Okay. Oh, wait, I have to play him for the red. So here's the deal. With 20 attack right now, I can hit Fin Fang Foom twice because when I play this, he's only going to be a 10 attack. This is not Cosmic Threat. Cosmic Threat, you can only hit the Mastermind once, and then he goes back to full power. Size changing, it doesn't matter how many times you use it, he's going to stay at the attack he's reduced to the whole time. I have 28 attack. I'm going to be able to hit Fin Fang Foom twice, but not three times because I don't have 30 attack. So b before I play All-Terrain Barbarian, I'm going to spend one of my attack points to scan this in the event it's a Master Striker Scheme Twist, and I might be able to uh, empty the sewers. So I'll spend one attack, and the sewers were scanned. It's a Shi'ar Death Commando. I'm going to go ahead and give them their Human Shield, and then I'm going to spend four of my remaining attack to rescue the Human Shield and then take them out. So I'll spend two to get the Human Shield, and oh, it's a special one. When you rescue this, you get two recruit usable, only two recruit heroes in the HQ space under the bank, which is what I'd want to recruit anyway, which is perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and give him a two here so I know that he is two cheaper. Now I'll spend two more attack to take these commandos out, and I will choose to KO a shield agent, and then I KO them. Now I can play finally All-Terrain Barbarian. So two recruit more for me, and then finally I'll patrol the sewers. It's empty, so I get one more recruit. Perfect. And absolutely finally, I am going to hit Fin Fang Foom twice for 10 each because of all my wonderful colors. Let's go ahead and hit him the first time. Multi-pronged assault. Each other player reveals at least three hero classes or gains a wound. Let's see what I can do over here. I'm not so optimistic. So tech, strength, covert. I've already done it, so I don't get a wound. Wonderful. I've got 13 attack left, so I'm going to hit him for a second time for another 10. Flammable Acid Breath. Fight. KO the top card of the hero deck, then each other player KOs the hero of that hero class from their discard pile. That's not good. Let's see what it is. It's a green strength card. And it's a Volstag, and I have to KO it. That's a bummer. Well, I've, I've proven I can generate plenty of attacks, so I have to find a green for my discard pile over here. Let's see? Oop. Look. No strength card, so I'm good. And just like that, we're down to our last tactic. And I've got three attack left. Now, this says you can't fight him unless you've already defeated another villain. The mastermind doesn't count, but I did defeat this henchman villain over here. So I'm going to go ahead and KO Orgo just because I can. And then finally... Which one should I recruit? This is cheap right now, but this is more useful because I can draw a card and I need that tech. So even though Volstag's cheaper, this will actually give me a net plus four attack because of minus two for the tech and two for the attack. This will give me a six plus two for the strength, which is eight, but I have a lot of those. You know what? I think the plus six net is better, so I'm going to go ahead and recruit the cheap Volstag for only four. I can get those other Doc Ox if I need to later. Oh, and there's their rare. We'll see if I can get to getting that. But right now, that very productive turn is over. Hey, this thing's almost over. But how soon can I end it? Finally, a turn with no gray card. Let's play surprise attack. One attack, and then I get to draw one. I get. Nice. I'll go ahead and play Appetite for Destruction. Two more attack. Let's see what the top card of my deck is. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and choose to feast it. So that was eaten. Now I'll play Gruesome Feast. Three more attack from that. And let's reveal the top card of my deck. I can choose to KO this one. I will not KO this one. I will put that back. Well, it's revealed, so it's face up, but I won't KO it. Rending Claws will just give me two more attack. And also has an excessive violence function like this one. Now, I've only got seven cards here, so I don't think I'm going to be able to trigger this. But, but just in case, let's, see, let's say I do. I'm going to get four more attack. That's going to be 12. What is Fin Fang Foom down to? How many types do I have? Oh, check it out. I have red, yellow, green, black. So he is a 12. So I'm just going to go ahead and play this. I'm up to 12 attack. I don't get to trigger his bonus plus two for being the eighth card, but whatever. Because, yeah, size changing, covert, instinct, strength, and tech put him down to a 12. So I have 12 attack. Let's go ahead and hit the mastermind for his last tactic. Supersonic dive attack. 
fight. KO the top card of the hero deck, then each player reveals their hand and discards a hero of that hero class. Oh man, that's even worse than the last one. Uh, oh man, okay, so tech. This is still in my hand, so this one gets discarded. And the left side, we'll see if I have the tech card in there. It is, darn, too bad. So that gets discarded and this gets KO'd. Feels great to only have to hit him once more. Um, I'll play Throg to get two more recruit because I don't really want him to hang around. And I'll take a sidekick just in case I can draw stuff. Red Ring will let me draw something special, so I'm fine with him. And cool, I didn't think I'd get a hit on the Mastermind there, but I did. And I just need to hit him one more time and the game's over. Will this be the last turn? Let's find out. Okay, two wounds, but other good stuff. So first we'll play this. We know the drill. I get four attack and four recruit because the rooftops are empty. Unfortunately, I don't have Spectrum, so I only get two attack from him. And then two more attack from him. So can't finish the game this turn, but I can reveal what I have here. So we will scan this one. Revealing the scariest brood so far, and we'll scan the final one in the sewers. And we get more death commandos who captured yet another human shield. So let's just take those out right now. First, we rescue the human shield. It is a standard. And now, I would KO the henchman, but I don't want to KO any of these three heroes, so I'm just going to leave them be. And I guess I could have just not fought them to avoid these wounds, but uh, I didn't. So let's move on. Oh, do I want to recruit anything? Yeah, I'll just take a sidekick to hopefully draw more cards, and that's exactly what I got. And now we can move on. Maybe this will be the last turn? Let's see. All right, let's do this in order. Let's try bursting with life here. K2 recruit. All right, I'm going to feast. Let's see if I KO something... Yes, so I KO one of these, perfect. It was a non-gray card, so Bursting with Life is going to transform. Beautiful, now we have Torrent of Brutalings to attack and draw a card. Gotta love babies. Okay, draw this card. Same one I KO'd. Now I can play Appetite for Destruction. Okay, two more attack for me. I have to shuffle my discard so I can look at the top card of my deck. Okay, and it is one of these Doc Ox. Should I feast it? Nah, I won't feast it, I'll just discard it. Oh, check this out, I didn't even think about this. So, I just did a couple of things. I transformed a card, and then I drew a card from the transformed card. So let's count how many cards I played this turn. One, two, three, four, five for the one that's transformed from, six for the new one it transformed into, and then if I play this, it would be card number seven. So I do it, and I play Brilliant Research and get two recruit. Which means eighth times a charm will be the eighth card I played this turn. Fancy loopholes. So I get four attack and then two more attack because it is the eighth card I played this turn. So a total of plus six attack. I have 12 attack now. Is that enough to finish Fin Fang Foom? Okay, how many classes do I have? I have strength, tech, covert, and that's it. So he is a 14. So that's not enough to take him out, unfortunately. But I will use seven of that 12 to take out this other brood. Once more, I KO one of my heroes. Let's KO this agent. And I KO a bystander from the bystander stack. We've got whoever this is. Okay, now I get to KO this brood. I've got five attack left. Let's use one to reveal this sewer's mystery. It's Blackthorn, who's a five attack with no ambush effect. I've got four attack left. Let's take out these death commandos. And the fight effect was KO one of your heroes. I'll KO one of these troopers. Okay, that's done. And with my last five recruit, I will go ahead and take this Doc Ock. And then refill the HQ and end my turn there. Okay, I've got to be able to end the game this turn. These carnivores should do it for me. Okay, I'll play Warlord first. Three attack plus one more for the two empty spaces next to each other. I'll play my first carnivore for two cards drawn. One and two. Awesome. I'll play my second carnivore for two more cards drawn. Here they are. One, two. Let's get both shield troopers out of the way. Now we'll play our Volstag with Bridge Conqueror so he gets plus six attack. All right, already up to 12. Let's play one of our Quiver of Thunderbolts. Two more attack, and I have three colors, so Spectrum lets me draw one more card here. I'll play my second Quiver of Thunderbolts for two more attack, and let me go ahead and draw my next card from that Spectrum. Here it is. Let me get rid of that Shield Agent. There we go, and now I'll play this other Volstag for six more with Bridge Conqueror. That's 22 attack, and then I finally will play All-Terrain Barbarian for the last color. That'll give me two recruit. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flex on Fin Fang Foom, and I don't need to use any of my size changing, even though I could take him down to a 10. I've got 20 attack, 22 attack actually. And I'm gonna hit him with the full 20 and take him out. And we have done it, we have won the game. Wow, we eventually did it. That was a really fun setup. I like the interactions between the Scheme Twist and Feast. 
Also, the face down cards with the scheme and Bridge Conqueror, there are a lot of cool interactions with the keywords in this one. So, thanks again to Gage Bender for commissioning this game for me. It was a lot of fun. If you would like to commission your own game, please visit my Ko fi page linked in the description. You can click on commissions and then you can commission any setup you want for me to play in a video just like this. If you don't want to commission a game and you just want to help out, that is super appreciated. I have a goal up there to upgrade my camera to a much better quality one to provide better looking videos for you guys. So yeah, check that out, the Ko-Fi link in the description. Again, if you like this video and like what I've been doing, make sure to subscribe and follow on all my other platforms in the description. Also, I'm doing weekly live streams on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Pacific time. I'm doing those across YouTube, Twitch, and Facebook. I randomized the setup right there and I try to play it as you guys watch and give me tips and yell at me when I make mistakes. So it's a lot of fun. Come and check that out on Thursdays at 2 p.m. Pacific. Again, thank you all so much for watching my videos. I'm glad you're enjoying them. I'm going to keep them coming and I hope you join us for the live stream on Thursday. Until then, take care.